And we're back with the breakfast time for us to go through the papers this morning. We have Tunde Kualawale, who's a legal practitioner. He joins us this morning via phone uh, in Lagos. Uh, Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, All right, then. Let's take a look at the punch. Naira crisis worsens, confusion over CBN silence on old notes and legal tender status. POS agents, customers fume as protesters barricade the road. MFLE justifies Naira redesign, accuses political party of mop-up. These are riders you find underneath. Resist interim government temptation. Afeni Ferry tells Buhari, but you know, I remember when the Afeni Ferry were on the path of saying, uh, we shouldn't have an election if we don't have like a constitutional accurate review. And one would say, don't we have a time to encourage that? So we shouldn't have elections. But it's, it's, it's very interesting to note that this is the position of the Afeni Ferry. Revenue Commission to review politician salary. INEC to keep sensitive election materials with the Central Bank of Nigeria. That's a U-turn. Namani sues PDPIU and restates uh, backing Tunubu. Okay. NYSC uh, warns core members against crime as orientation ends. And just before we move away from that, trapped earthquake victims cry for help. That's toll now for 1,200. And uh, contempt EFCC kicks a CSO demand Bowers removal. They go past the Beck's wife, jail for impregnating two sisters, quite unfortunate. All right, let's move straight to the next paper. Uh, some similar headlines to what you have in the punch. This day uh, on Wednesday with the following headlines. A big one there. Presidency FG CBN to take position on currency swap after Supreme Court's determination uh, today. 15th uh, uh, of February, I think today we can say it's D-Day. As far as that is concerned, 2023 election this day, editorial board intervention. Okay, something you may want to read there. Fitch, Nigeria to face post election economic uh, policy challenges. And of course, I think that maybe the ratings, uh, the economic ratings uh, body Fitch. Uh, Taj Banks becomes first corporate to list uh, Sukuk bond on NGX. Um, Buhari Hills uh, Pate on appointment as Gavi C. E O, and uh, some of the headlines on front page of this day. Well, we'll move away from the this day newspaper and uh, we'll take a look at the Daily Independent. That's what we have here. Confusion, anger persists as Naira notes exchange crisis worsens. February 10 deadline on all Naira notes stands, Emefiel is saying. And I know there's a lot of people are still using the old note, some persons actually, in the course of their transaction. Protesters storm CBN in Ondo and demand banks to collect old notes. Well, I, I don't think that the CBN is saying they won't get the old notes, but I think it's no longer uh, a means of transaction. It's no longer a valid means of transaction where you can still remit that. There's a procedure uh, to all of that. Gandhiji to sanction banks, businesses that reject old Naira notes. Oh, that's quite interesting. New Naira notes uh, of the CBN facing sabotage from 10 governors, CSOs are quoted to say. 120 CSOs petition NAS insist EFCC boss must go and serve prison term. 48,683 luggage missing, delayed in Nigeria in 12 months. And I just take this one before we move away for the want of time. Implementation of the Niger uh, swap politically motivated, that's what Wike is saying expresses joy over independence man of the year award that's sit on the daily independent all right we'll take just a few stories from the other uh, nation um the big one there legal giants knock a mayfield for disrespecting supreme court uh, timbo will deliver as president buhari tells supporters as at emo rally and i uh, will bring in our guest this morning uh Kolawale, and uh, incidentally he's a uh, a uh, legal practitioner of no mean repute, I think. Uh, Tunde Kolo, your best place to answer or to give your thoughts uh, on, to give thoughts rather on this uh, uh, one. Uh, the papers have talked about the Naira swap policy. We have something on that on the Daily Independent. Uh, we have something on that in front of the This Day newspaper today and indeed the big story on the Punch uh, newspaper. But let's take the headline of the nation 
because it's bringing in the legal anger. What is your opinion? Um, are you going to join the legal giants the nation is by citing to knock a Mayfield for disrespecting, in their words, disrespecting the Supreme Court with um, uh, saying no extension of deadline despite this injunction that has been on for some time now? Well, I, first and foremost, I'd like to sympathize with all Nigerians who have uh, been enduring this self-inflicted injury that we have in our hands. With regards to the legal uh, issues that are involved, these are these, uh, the interim order of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. My take is that uh, no matter how comfortable a decision of a court may be, whether it's the customary court, magistrate court, high court, court of appeal, or the Supreme Court, that decision should be obeyed and respected. Any alternative to that is chaos and anarchy. It will lead to instability. So, the CBN governor is not bigger than the Supreme Court. And the CBN governor, in the first instance, can be said to have created the problem that we have in our hands. Now that the Supreme Court has given him a kind of lifeline with regards to the assignment he has born good, I should think that he should seize the opportunity and use that uh, window of uh, extension that the Supreme Court has given him to do the needful, to insist that the deadline will remain as it were or as it was uh, pronounced by the Central Bank of Nigeria, will be a willful disregard or, a, or it will be contemptuous of the decision of the Supreme Court. And anybody who is seen to be contemptuous of a court of competent jurisdiction can be punished or sanctioned by that uh, court, uh, more especially when it is the highest court in the land. Okay. Tunde Kolawole, let's move yeah. to the Daily Independent newspaper now. There are concerns and, of course, uh, you have civil society organization and other Nigerians who are protesting and asking for the removal of Bawa, Abdurashid Bawa, uh, who is uh, the EFCC boss, uh, saying that uh, his consistency in disobedience of court orders, infringement on human rights is one. He has to serve a prison term. What are your thoughts, really? Well, it's uh, not too different from um, what I've just said now, that no matter how unpalatable which of the court may be, that decision has to be respected. That the chairman of ESCC has been consistently disobeying court orders uh, without any justifiable reason. I would want to align myself or adopt the decision of the civil society groups that have said that the man should be removed for not having respect for the court and for not obeying court orders. Because, like I said, if you disobey court orders, it will be an invitation to anarchy. But the issue now is uh, who is going to enforce a court order that is made against the chairman of ESCC, that is made against the inspector general of police or the director of DSS, the DG, the director general of DSS, or the chief of army staff. We don't have the, the mechanism in this part of the world to really enforce whatever decisions are made against those persons. And you and I do know it is the executive arm of government, it is Mr. President, that these people report to and the attorney general of the Federation that should really insist or enforce or make sure that some of these people in the executive arm of government who are disobeying court orders are made to obey those court orders. But if they are principal, that is Mr. President, and the attorney general is also not king or not giving the presidency the right advice 
on the need to always obey court orders. Then we have a fate accomplished in our hands. But the dangers are too many. But truth of the matter is, we don't have the mechanism to enforce the future of our court against this person. And these persons also have not cultivated what happens in some other jurisdiction, in which once you are indicted by a court, most times what people do is to even resign their appointment from those places. But here, it is always business as usual, and nobody will likely sanction them for carrying on business as usual. Interesting. Uh, let's um, uh, go over to the Daily Independent. The paper is still keeping us uh, informed of uh, what's been going on with the coup allegation situation and uh, Femi Fani Kayede, whom you're quite familiar with. Uh, the paper says the DSS is, had grilled him and uh, has advised uh, the spokespersons of political parties and uh, candidates to, um, you know, to have uh, a, a caution, excise caution, as regards the utterances. Um, we're hearing Atikus aide is saying that he should apologize to Atiku Abubakar and the Nigerian military. What are your thoughts on this, please? I agree with the DSS that uh, what uh, the Chief Gani, I mean, Chief, Chief uh, Fani Kayode said is uh, totally uh, absurd and uh, has the capacity to really delay the transition or uh, the election that we do have in our hands. It also has very, very serious implications for all the military chiefs. Because what uh, Fani Kayode is saying is that uh, the military chiefs in uh, connivance or conspiracy with Alaji Atiku Abubakar uh, out to carry out a coup and forsake the next coming election and probably put this uh, uh, democracy and republic into jeopardy. Anybody who has been following the, assist the antecedents of Fani Kayode already know that the man is consistently inconsistent it is uh, what suits him, or whatever he thinks, who is his principal at any particular period in time, that he goes out to say and he goes out to pursue. The one that I have is that uh, why the Nigerian media still continue to give prominence to whatever that kind of an inconsistent person says. He's fond of eating up the policy, he's fond of saying. I mean, anything against even his own former principal, once you are no longer in the position to butter his bread, then you should be ready to be at the receiving end of his uh, tongue. And I think at his age, he ought to have uh, departed from this kind of uh, horrible and inconsistent uh, APS. And you and I do know too that it's not just in the area of politics that uh, he's been uh, uh, making all these uh, gaps, even at the domestic level, at the homestead level, he has been consistently inconsistent. My advice would be that the Nigerian media should, uh, as much as possible, be very careful with whatever they pick up from Ghani, I mean, from Fani Kayote, when they want to report it. I also think that Alaji Atiku Abubakar can go to court to seek damages for the utterances that um, Fani Kayode has uh, made. Because it's a damage to Alaji Atiku Abubakar's reputation. It is also a damage to the man's chances at the forthcoming uh, presidential election. Because ordinarily, a discarnate voter will not want to vote for a coupist. And the man has been accused of planning a coup. I think the army chiefs can also go to court to seek a, a redress. And of course, the DSS can also prosecute uh, Fanny Coyote for raising false alarm. Because when you raise a false alarm or you make a transit that has the capacity to kind of undermine public peace, then you might have a case to answer.
in the court of competent jurisdiction. Okay. Um, let's move away to other issues uh, still on the Daily Independent newspaper. Uh, what we're looking at is the concerns by the NUC uh, to cede 70% of its regulatory powers to the Senate uh, to determine the curriculum and content of universities in Nigeria. In other words, um, this means that each uh, university management will be able to establish their course content or curriculum exclusively. Do you think that this solves the problem of our curriculum? Over time, that's been criticized. Uh, does that solve a curriculum issue, ceding powers to the Senate, 70% of that? Uh, ordinarily, in most of the developed countries of the world, the universities or the institutions have the powers and the latitude to determine the course content of whatever disciplines or courses or subjects that they teach in their institutions or in their universities or whatsoever. But here, in Nigeria, the situation is slightly different in the sense that most of the public universities are financed by the federal government. The state universities are financed by the state government. And if it is the federal government and the state government that are financing most of these universities and all that, it is elementary logic that he who pays the piper will ordinarily may call the tune. And why would the piper call the tune? It's because every government, especially in the developing environment like us and like our own, who want to see university curriculum align with the development aspirations, with the planning of the country as a whole. Not that the university, the protecting all the higher institution, will be teaching the different subjects in an in an absurd manner without aligning those things with the aspiration, with the developmental plan of the country as a whole. The reason why the NUC, for example, National University Commission was established, was to be able to streamline, was to be able to coordinate the activities that take place on the different university campuses and some of these higher institutions. If that is the case, then you will have to amend the NUC Act, and also maybe public give the universities the autonomy that they have been yearning for all this uh, while. I think, given our level of development, I will not support a situation in which the universities will solely determine their own curriculum. I'll give you an example. In a place like um, the University of Ibadan, for example, a subject like classic is still being taught. And only a few students apply for those courses on a yearly basis. I should think if we were looking at the resources that have been dissipated in teaching that course to a number of students, we should have done something about it. Maybe make classic part of a law degree program. Maybe we could make classic part of those who study the languages. Maybe we could make classic, uh, put it in the general studies department, in which at least all students who are the universities will have opportunity to study Latin and classics. Because one way or other, you'll find out that in working life, in real life, you will at one time or other have something to do with Latin, have something to do with classics, just as it affects the, those who study or those who practice uh, law. Furthermore, I have seen a situation in which we need to balance the ratio of the number of students who are going for the science courses, these are these the art courses. Too many students are looking for the simplest, the easiest way out. They apply more for the art subjects. Why the sciences are suffering. And in my opinion, the discipline of the subject that this country requires today to develop are the sciences. You need to study mathematics, you need to study additional math, you need to study engineering, 
you need to study chemistry, you need to study physics. If you want to catch up with the rest of the world in the area of uh, science, in the area of artificial intelligence, in IT, in computer, and what happens, a situation in which about 70 to 80 percent of our students going for the arts or guests does not all go well for the scientific development of the country as a whole. All right, thank you very much, Nicola. We'll take a, a headline from another headline from the Punch newspaper um, the issue of uh, interim government and the possibility of that. I don't know if you see that as a possibility. Um, but uh, Afeni, Afeni Ferre is uh, telling uh, President Buhari to resist interim government temptation. Resist interim government temptation. That's on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Is that a possibility? Is that something that we should even be uh, having sleepless nights over as far as the, the forthcoming elections are concerned? Well, to the best of my knowledge, I think the Afeni Ferre people are being unfair President Buhari, thanks to that number, President Buhari has not meant well that he desires to hand over power to the next democratically elected president, governors, and what have you. And that he will require a very, very credible, and that he will not waver in ensuring that we have a very credible election. A few days ago, he went to commission some of the equipment that were bought for the Nigerian police. And while he was addressing the police chiefs, he asked them, he admonished them, he enjoined them, and ordered them not to compromise the integrity of the forthcoming election. So if a man has been that uh, forthcoming, if a man has been saying that, I'm not too sure that kind of a person will again be harboring the hidden agenda of having an Italian government. You and I will remember that it is the African people that have been insisting on an interim government that we should first have an interim government and then review the constitution. And that after we have reviewed the constitution, we have not we have now gotten the constitution that is suitable that is desired that the different regions of the country want. Then we can now go and then um, organize elections and get people back into the democracy track. Uh, democracy is not uh, a day affair or two days are a week affair. America has been thinking, has been developing its democracy for more than 400 years. Some countries have also been on it for more than 200 years. It is not a thing that happens overnight. So I would rather insist and admonish that we should allow the people in the National Assembly the people in the executive arm of government, the people at the state, people at the local government level, and all that, to so begin to think up and grow this democracy, learn to do it the way it should be done until we nearly reach a state of affection, such as they have in the US, in Brazil, and some of these other places. Even with those developed and advanced democracy, look at what happened in America during the last election, in which a Donald Trump was set to have nearly toppled a democracy that almost about 400 uh, a year ago. Mm. Also, not too long ago in Brazil, Juan Bonazario, whatever they call him, having been defeated in the presidential election, we also organized an insurrection we, in which people we have to, to go now. Uh, uh, those who have been elected into some of these offices by the people. Well, so, sovereignty lies with the people of Nigeria not with the executive of government, more with the National Assembly and the Federal Assembly. Let us learn to crawl before we begin to walk. All right, Tunde Kolawali, I, I mean, it's very apt that you have raised some of these concerns. One would begin to say that the group, the Afenifer, probably might be double speaking because when you say you need the constitution to be reviewed to the latter before we can have an election, and here you're saying uh, the president should not consider uh, the country should not consider an interim government. We, we begin to wonder what that means. Well, quickly, uh, in less than a minute, because we have to, you know, coast this conversation down. And it's about right. um, the umpire, the saddled with the responsibility of conducting elections, credible elections in, a, in, in Nigeria. 
Uh, they have made a U-turn, that's how the punch describes it, as to where sensitive election materials will be kept. Now, remember that uh, at some point, Nigerians has raised concerns as to the sanctity of this uh, sanctity of materials being kept with uh, the CBN when the CBN governor had indicated interest of vying for political office in the party. And so uh, then it was suspended. The, the umpire immediately stated that they will no longer keep sensitive materials with the CBN. Now this, there's a change of mind. What do you think could be responsible for this, you know, decision by INEC? Well, uh, I think INEC doesn't want his work to be tainted uh, because if you have the head of a CPN that uh, is uh, found to be obnoxious with politicians, and who has shown interest, who has been alleged to have shown interest in vying for contesting the presidency of the country, then if you are INEC, you will be careful with that kind of a person. Because if anything goes wrong, you are going to be blamed for taking some of those sensitive materials to CBN when you do know that the head of the CBN is a partisan person. And the problem becomes even more uh, dangerous in the sense that it's not just that the man is interested in politics, he is said to be a card carrying member of the party that is in power today. If by chance you keep the material with the CP and you do the election, and the party in power now wins the election, could it not be said that the CBN has used the material kept in its custody to influence the outcome of the election? I think this is the danger that INEC might be facing if they still insist on keeping the materials with the CPN. But we must be very careful. The CPN governor is just one person. There are thousands of people working in the CPN. I mean, there are several directors. I'm not too sure that the CPN governor alone can unilaterally release those materials to any political parties without the other governors without the deputy governor, without the directors, without the members of the board, and other people who work in CPM, colluding, conspiring, and conniving uh, uh, with them. And uh, it's not just the CPM. In the past, the INEC also used to use some of these uh, banks, and the commercial banks, to keep some of their materials. With the crisis that is going on in the banks today, could it not be, I mean, that those materials... Oh, um, we have to go. <laughs> it happens from time to time. I mean, uh, um, uh, no cause for alarm right there. Uh, no, of course. But today, Kola, we apologize uh, uh, we, for the interruption. We, we have to go, um, but we are grateful for your time. Thank you very much. All right. Merci. That was unexpected. It happens. <laughs> I think it's one of those uh, TV moments. But um, we have more discussions ahead, and uh, we'll be looking at um, the Naira. And, uh, of course, Nigerian economy, we expect it to go uh, cashless to a large extent than uh, had been obtaining previously. What does this mean as we, we approach, uh, you know, the years ahead? We're talking about the future of Nigeria's cashless policy. Stay with us. Uh, we'll be right back.